Hey everybody, welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid. If you listen closely, you can hear some logging equipment up there on top of the mountain above me. Got a bit of a logging operation going on, a bordering property up there. I'm, I'm in my woods here, cutting up some firewood, getting ready for winter. We got a little bit of time, but not a whole lot. We're into the month of October right now. Halloween's approaching, and as such, uh, I've been doing a series here of ghost stories. Being here in the woods, cutting firewood, thinking about the loggers up on top of the hill there. Reminds me about a story I'm going to relay to you, and I'm going to put myself into the first person narrative as I tell this story. Not saying that this happened, and not saying that it did. It just makes for a better story. Well, I'll let you figure out whether or not it's true. And, uh... So anyway, you know, there's a lot of strangely named places around the world. And even here at home in the U.S., no matter what state we're in, I remember one time I was uh, taking a cross-country trip and I was in South Texas and crossed a river called Screaming Holler River, or Screaming Woman River, or Screaming Woman Creek, something to that effect. And I remember thinking, gosh, something terrible must have happened to some poor lady here. And that's not a joke, folks, because most places derive their names from events or people. A lot of times you'll hear of uh, maybe Smith Mountain. Maybe the Smith family settled that place. Or Walton Mountain, like here in Albemarle County, uh, famous for the Waltons. Uh, well, there's a hollow deep back in Appalachia that I know of called Stiffman Hollow. Now, there's probably a Stiffman Hollow anywhere where they used to do timbering and logging. Uh, whether it's the Appalachian Mountains or whether it's the Cascades out in Washington State, the Pacific Northwest, as you know, is also famous for logging. Could be upstate New York. There's probably a Stiffman Hollow anywhere because once upon a time, maybe 150, 200 years or so ago, when they were logging on top of one such mountain, there's a logger somewhere, just about everywhere, who froze to death. That's where the, the name Stiff Man hollow comes from by the time they found him there at the end of the winter thaw early the next spring he'd been frozen stiff a lot of times his body was preserved never even started to decay because of the long winter well there's one stiffman holler there's this old boy he was a logger we'll call him clem and uh clem they always said he was going to he was always seen smoking in life. They'd probably find him in death with a cigarette in his mouth, and I guess they were they were uh, they were right about that because old Clem was out, and this is about 150 years ago, up on top of Cheat Mountain in West by God, Virginia. Clem was out, and got lost in a squall, winter snowstorm. Couldn't find his way back to the to the logging camp. Stopped to lean up against a tree like I am here to light up one last cigarette. And that was his last because when they found him the next spring, as he was just starting to thaw out, he still had that cigarette stuck in his mouth. Now, they got old Clem together and they were getting ready to take him back down into town when another late season squall came in and everything froze up and old Clem froze up just about as much as he'd been frozen just a little bit before, before spring started thawing him out. They didn't have room for him in the wagon, so they decided to tie him up behind the wagon. Tied him up around the ankles by a rope and just decided to drag him off the top of the mountain down into town. And these loggers, they were transient types. None of them had any kinfolk anywhere nearby. They just figured they'd drag him off the mountain, turn him over to the local church or the funeral parlor if there was one, and be on their way as they went out to log in the next community. So they're going down miles off this mountain, dragging old Clem frozen as he was behind the wagon and uh, they go through a creek give him a good old coat of water which as soon as they come out the other side freezes him even stiffer next thing you know the old buckboard wagon starts hitting some bumps the cadaver behind him hits those same bumps and old Clem's head pops clean off rolls down over the hill but nobody's paying any attention because they're covered up with with blankets and trying to protect themselves from the wind and the snow they go on down the holler a little ways and they hit a few more bumps and well old clem breaks off at the waist and his upper part minus his head goes rolling down over the hill making quite a racket but they didn't hear because of the squall the wind the snow and trying to stay warm under those blankets 
little further down they hit another big old bump and old Clem's legs was all that's left well they split like a wishbone and one went down over the hill into the creek bed there down there in the holler by the time they got down to the bottom of the the mountain there the one guy looked at the other and said what are we going to do we got nothing but a leg left and the other guy says well I don't guess anybody's going to come claim a leg we may as well just cut him off the rope here and just leave him be and let's get on back go on down there to the to the pub and get us a shot of liquor and get warmed up so that's what they did they cut the rope let old Clem's leg lay and went on down to the pub got him a shot or two and warmed themselves back up and that place forevermore was known as Stiffman's Hollow because like so many hollows where people had logged for centuries to make this great country great to get the wood and the timber out to build the houses and the bridges and the buildings and everything they make out of wood some logger somewhere once upon a time froze to death and then you had yourself a little stiffman's hollow you can google them you won't find these places but if you can get a hold of an old topographical map you'll probably find them written on there as far as the names go back there in west by god virginia there's one such stiffman's hollow and every halloween night local teenagers as a rite of passage have somewhat of a challenge and one halloween night 30 plus years ago I decided I'd take the Stiffman Hollow challenge so here's the deal there was a small community about a mile and a half up Stiffman's Hollow where there's just a few houses and there was one street light so down at the bottom of the holler there's a street light where you enter the small town you got a mile and a half straight up Stiffman's Hollow it's black as pitch at, at night there's no street lights no artificial light and the canopy of the treetops are so thick it blocks out any moonlight or starlight that shines through. You go up to the top, mile and a half up, and then there's your light, your next light. Now, the way this dare worked is you had to start at the bottom all by yourself. You had to walk to the top. You had to do this on Halloween night. There were witnesses, and they'd always leave something up at the top underneath that light. Um, usually it was just a say an old soda can, an empty Coca-Cola can, or maybe it was an old beer bottle, but it was something that the group, there'd be three or four of them down there waiting. They knew what it was. You had to walk up there and get it and then bring it back, and that was proof that you made it. So that one night, 30-plus years ago, if this were true, I go up there shaking like a leaf on a tree the whole mile and a half up. I get to the top, and it was an old Coca-Cola can just crushed inside looked like one of the guys waiting on me down there at the bottom drank it just before he set it down up there drank it crushed it and let it be so i get it and i started heading back down thinking well there's nothing to this these ghosts and all this stuff this isn't real so what if some old boy froze to death up here getting lost in a snowstorm 150 years ago these are my thoughts as I'm starting to cross the creek once I'm about 150, 200 yards back down into total pitch darkness. So I'm walking across the creek, across the bridge that covers the creek, and I just happen to look up just a bit and down the road about 50 yards, I see what looks like the bright flicker of a match getting lit and somebody lighting a cigarette. So I stop and I wait and I watch. Now, I know that none of the boys down there below me, we did a lot of things when we were younger we shouldn't have done, but at that point, none of them were smoking, and I wasn't either. We weren't experimenting with that stuff, so I just I figured maybe it was somebody coming up the holler. Maybe somebody lived up there. They stopped to light them a smoke. Well, I saw the light of the cigarette. You could see it coming up. It'd get bright as whoever was smoking took a puff, and then it'd go down. The glow would about go up, go out. Then it'd come up, it'd get bright again, then it'd go down. This went on for a couple of minutes, and I'll tell you, I, frankly, I was a little bit scared to proceed with my walk, so I didn't. I waited until that cigarette came up one last time, burned real bright from where somebody was taking a real big draw off of it, and then I saw it get flicked through the woods like that. Then I heard footsteps going down the hill. And then I heard something crash to the ground and go rolling down over the holler into the creek below. Sounded like maybe somebody dropped a bowling ball or a large rock. Well, I didn't know what in the world it was, but I could hear the footsteps moving away from me, going down the same direction I was. So I very cautiously started following. I made sure not to kick over any rocks, not to make any noise whatsoever as I started going down this hill. 
So I go down the hill, maybe a quarter of a mile. I'm stopping every now and then, and I can hear footsteps in front of me. This guy's got maybe, or whatever it was, 50 yards on me, and I hear flop, 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 footsteps. Well, all of a sudden, they stop, so I stop. I hear another loud bang, something hitting the ground, like maybe somebody dropped a sack of flour or maybe a 50-pound sack of rice from about waist level. And then I hear something go rolling down over the hill in the dry leaves. Because you know, this same time of year, October, you hear it crackling in the leaves going down over the hill, down towards the creek bed, then it stopped. So I listen. Then I start hearing the footprints again. Flop, 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 flop. Started at the same spot they'd stopped but something was different. It sounded lighter, like maybe whoever was making these, these sounds, the, 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 the steps I was hearing, had lost half their weight. So I start following, going down a hill, get about another half mile down. We're getting close, and I'm thankful we're getting close, and they stop, so I stop. And I listen, and then I hear something else falling in the leaves, rolling down over the hill. And then I hear hop, 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 like whoever I'd been following was going down the hill, hopping on one leg. Well, I start following, hop, hop, only hearing one hop for every two steps I'm taking. I can see the dimly lit uh, street lamp down there at the bottom of the hill, so I've made it out. I've got that crushed Coca-Cola can in my hand, and I'm finally going to get to see what's making this noise. So I start speeding up a little bit, knowing the lights down there, knowing my buddies are down there. One of them had his dog he always had with him. So if whoever this was got crazy or violent because my friend had a pit bull, I get down there, hop, I'm hearing it, hop, I'm closing in on it. I start running, hop, flop, just as I come to the edge of where the light is cast down from the street post, a leg bone and a foot bone just flops right there on the ground. And I look down. The other guys come over, they look down, nobody says a thing. That dog comes over, looks down, picks it up, takes off with it in its mouth and just takes off towards home. I hand my buddies a crushed Coca-Cola can and I had successfully completed the Stiffman Hollow Challenge, the Stiffman Hollow Dare on one creepy, spooky Halloween night. Now, if I don't get too spooked out, I'll come up here and tell you another one of these stories tonight before darkness. But like I said, we got some strange things going on around here uh, that maybe we'll be able to explain in November once the Halloween energy is gone. But for now, I can't make you any promises. But I'll do my best to get back out here tomorrow in the afternoon. Hope you enjoyed this story. We've got a whole list of them on a playlist called Ghost Stories on our channel. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you for more next time from here at Homesteading Off the Grid.